lot in all of my white flowers. I use this color combination. Okay, now mixing yellow again over here on this daisy. So if you want to paint really fast, while you've got yellow in the brush and to keep it clean, just put it all the yellow you need and all the flowers, if you've already got it sketched out. I just sketched this one with a pencil. And then you keep your yellow clean. Now remember that cool colors recede, one warm colors come forward. By the way, can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So with that, I'm going to now put on in uh, the other colors that you see in there, the pink. I usually save the blue for last because it tends to stay in my brush more. So I don't put the blue in till later. And also I think about it's gonna be in shadow under here. So I'm going to be putting the pink there. I'm holding this at an angle at, at my camera so that with it flat, it tends to get a glare. So hopefully y'all can see this, okay. There's nothing worse than not being able to see. And so what I call this at this point is an educated mess. It looks spotty, but we're going to blend. And I don't do any details right now. I'm just putting in color. Now then, I'm going to blend and I crosshatch when I blend and it becomes, but I still want to be able to see some of the pink and some of the yellow and some of the blue, but by crosshatching, you don't want to go this way. If you go this way, you make stripes and I don't want stripes. I just want soft tints of color right now. And believe it or not, this will be white and I lost some of my pink over here. So I'm gonna add some more. And if you wanna add paint without disturbing the paint below it, just do a real light touch. You portrait artists usually have a light touch and there's not an issue with that. So just cross hatching it on. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is do uh, the center of the flower. And I'm gonna to go to a little bit smaller brush. That was a half inch. I'm gonna go to a three eighths. Doesn't matter what size brush you use, just as what does the job. Okay, so now then with a little pecan, I'm gonna give a little depth to the center. Then I'm gonna use a little yellow red. Now, why did I put the pecan first? Because I want to put the yellow red over it, which will gray that yellow red just a little bit because pecan is a little bit of a dirty color. And uh, it makes a more pleasing center. Okay, so that is the flowers blocked in. Before I wipe out the flowers, I like to put in some leaves or some black background. So when I pull back to out to that background, I uh, have a nice, uh, edge. Okay, so now I'm going back to the bigger brush and I'm going to show you quickly. I'm going to add the leaves that you see in here. You see how white they look? That's because I've lifted out a lot of color, but later on I can put more color back in. But this is the first fire that I did of these uh, daisies. I always like to know where we're going with things. I'm one of those people that wants to know where are we headed and why. So now that I'm going to add black green to the brush first and a little bit of blue green. And that color is going to go back up into a little bit more black green between some of these. And I'm not thinking leaves right now. In a way, yes and no. I am just thinking about where I want some of these darks to make these flowers pop. Without the dark in there, you can't tell exactly edges as well. And uh, because this has no background, I really would like to have some depth back here. 
background you could do later, it would be up to you as to what you'd like. Okay, so she so said how that's starting to pop up there now. Now then I'm going to paint in some leaves and I'm gonna use antique green in my brush first and then chartreuse. One of the most important things to, to do though is when you load your brush and I know some of y'all are very experienced painters, but I set up my palette like a color wheel. When I wanna load my brush full with color, I come straight down in the paint and load very flat, flat. When the paint gets to the color that I'd like and nice and even, then I stop. Then I'll go into maybe some chartreuse and I'll do a side load. So now I have a double load in my brush. Now I'm gonna come in and paint in, pulling towards the center vein, away from the center vein and thinking of this in wedge shapes to create this daisy leaf. I'm cleaning the brush again and adding more color. Now I added a little black green to this antique green now, because it's darker up here below the flowers. Now into a little chartreuse as I move out. How y'all doing? You painting or you watching? All right. I'm painting. All right, good. Hi, Anna. Hi, how you doing? Oh, uh, good. So just keep painting in these wedge strokes strokes and as you move out to the very end go into some chartreuse you know when you when you paint and you go think 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 then your painting is going to look like you were think think thinking sometimes it's better just to go for it and uh not be so uptight about it just have fun this is one of the best art that I have ever done. I mean, I love this over anything else and I paint other mediums. But again, the brush strokes are important. See that nice little wedge stroke. All right, I'm finally getting some, I could see that little message, thanks. All right, so now then they look kind of uh, almost like wings here but I have to pull this one that I put in the behind here. If you look at the study, there's one that's coming right in here. And they make a triad or a trio of three and that's better than single or two, two, two. Now you'll see in the original painting that I have some shadow leaves down in here. That is, I'm gonna do it now, but you can always put shadow in leaves in later. But it also balances the weight of all of these daisies up here. And Suzanne, if you'll keep be the timekeeper, please, and let me know when it's getting close to the end so I can speed up if I need to. <laughs> Okay, we're doing great on- You're probably thinking I'm going fast now, right? But the refining, this is just blocking in. The refining part is gonna take longer, trust me. So don't be too precise with this right this second, okay? Just get it in, get her in, get it in.
and they're going to be some little buds up in here. I'm not going to do those this second. I'm going to stop a minute, let you catch up for just a second, and I can answer a question or two. Well, y'all must have had y'all must have it really good. You don't need that, me to ask answer a question. Way to go! I'm just painting like a a, a mad person. <laughs> Paint. Paint like a mad person. That's a good thing to do. Okay, remember everybody's well, muted so they can use the chat feature and we're answering that and directing questions to you so that you remain as the, as the big speaker with your piece in the okay. middle. Thank you so much. Can y'all see this piece okay? okay. Yes. Okay. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Wait a minute. I'm cut out. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. So now then I'm going to, after I get this in and all of this blocked in like I need, I'm going to wipe out the flowers. All right. You don't want to use too big of a brush to do that. Uh, like this guy that he's way too big so i normally use like a three eighths and th that works for me i don't use a rounded brush because a rounded brush i think needs to be um uh, it tends to make the same shape over and over again where if i use a a, a, a square shader we call them or flat we can I can change the position of the brush and change the position of the petal. And one of the things that um, you want with these petals is you want them to have different spacings in between them that they're not all the same distance in between. And that's what makes them interesting. If you make them equally spaced, it's really boring. If you make the width of the petals equally spaced, it's really boring. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use my, and I'm going to pull towards that center. And I'll do a stroke beside a stroke. I'll turn the piece and then I'll pull the other one out. I'll turn the piece. I'll pull in. Yes, I used open oil to mix my colors. And here, so what I'm looking at is I want these interesting negative spaces between the petals, interesting gaps. I use a mixing medium to mix my paints with and it is a, uh, open medium. I paint with a uh, terpenoid natural, which is a semi open medium. But use what you're used to. So I'm still pulling towards them. Now when I want to come into where it's a dark area, like right here. See right in here. If I pull from the outside in, I'm going to be pulling that color into my daisy. I want to pull it out from the inside out, you see, and that way I'm not pulling that color into there. If I want some of that color in there, then I would pull from that area in towards the center. Now here I've got a picket fence. I've got three alike alike. I don't like that. So it's as simple as coming in and change that up with a little bit more dark there. See how I changed that edge? Okay. Also, if your cloth gets, I'm blotting between each, each wipeout so that I keep my colors clean. But if your cloth gets really wet, make sure you change it and get you a clean one because you're just gonna be picking up dirty color. And these are nice, clean, white flowers. So we don't want, now when the brush splits, it's calling for oil. So don't uh, let it get too dry. And I'm, I'm cleaning out,
lost you, Cheryl. Sorry, I don't know why I lost connection completely and then it wouldn't let me back in. So welcome to technology. All right. So uh, did we lose everybody? Did everybody leave? Everybody's here. Not. They're going to stay muted because you're the speaker. We okay. All right. So, all right. So while I was off camera waiting to get unmuted, I wiped out that flower just a little bit more. So hopefully that allowed you to catch up a little bit. Hopefully you were painting while we were on the fritz there. That's thunder. So just keep doing all your daisies like that. Now I want to show you how to do a leaf because we've lost some time. I'm going to uh, just kind of give you an idea. So when I do the leaves, I come in and I wipe out with a wedge stroke again. So I'm not going to complete this whole painting on this session because of the time we lost but it's the same idea on all of the leaves and after I wipe out that wedge stroke I come back with a clean brush and wipe out the veins just just a clean six aught pointer and I wipe out the veins Now, I don't want that wedge of dark right there, so I'm going to lighten that, and I'm going to pull this daisy petal over. All right. Do you see that now? Okay. So now then, I'm going to do the next leaf. I did the one on top. Now I'm going to do this one, and it's just that wedge stroke again. Now, you don't want to make all the wedges the same shape. So make some bigger, some smaller, make the outside edge of that uh, petal, not, not petal, excuse me, leaf, not look like rickrack. Another great thing to use, because we don't have background here, on this daisy I completed up here, I'm going to take the white, I'm going to pull this up close to the camera so you can see. You see, and I'm gonna come in and make out this interesting outside edge to the daisy. Now, this is what I don't want you to do. See how I did this right here? Look, boom, 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 boom. And look, that all is ending on a, the same line. We don't want that. So I'm going to pull out a petal and I'm going to put color on the brush so I can see it. So sometimes you have to put color back in. Now I do want to show you what I'm going to do to the center of the flower. I'm going to wipe out and I'm going to tap and that helps to give me an interesting shape in the center. Also the daisy itself, the center is made up of a bunch of little stamen and so it is a uh, rough you see it's not smooth so don't paint paint it smooth and i don't paint that hole right in the center i think it's if you do you make it very light uh i prefer not to because you that's that's getting up close and personal we don't need to get up that close and personal okay so now then i'm going to use my wipeout tool and i'm going to use the wedge end of the wipeout tool and i'm going to go around the outside edge of the and I'm going to twist it by twisting it in my hand I get more interesting shapes if you go down and just do it the same way all the way around what happens is 
that's the definition of insanity. You get the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But if you twist it, you get really interesting shapes. Now, I'm doing this right where the daisy meets those petals right behind them. And also, I use the wipeout tool, like I said, to give me an interesting outside shape. Now, you don't want to leave this waxy buildup up there when you do that. So you just come back and you soften that edge. So when you come to the daisies together like this, you don't want them what I call kissing cousins. You just don't want the pet. You want them to overlap. So now then that I've got this one wiped out some here, I will pull out these petals over the top of that daisy below. And I don't want as much detail in these petals here either because they are underneath the other flower. Just keep pulling, making sure they're interesting outside shapes. If you want to do uh, like a Gerber daisy where it has double petals, you do the outside petals first, and then you pull the petals uh, in between the others. So if I wanted to put, I put another petal, another petal. That's a little bit more difficult. I wanted to keep this uh, video Zoom thing. <laughs> Uh, more interesting, more, uh, a little simpler to do. Now then I'll come back and I'll do a stroke beside a stroke. And yet that gives you that little um, bit of ribbing that these petals have. If you look closely, you can see, I don't know if you can see that real close. See how they've got those shadows? I'm gonna point with the brush. See these deep shadows in here? Now, see this cast shadow that you see there and there? You could do those on another fire and not this fire. If you look, they're just pretty simple on the first fire. But I want to put in some of these little dark negative spaces between the flowers, and that kind of gives them a little bit more of an opening. That's painter's choice, whether you want to do that or not. I'm going to use black, green, and blue, green. And I start in between two petals, come right up to that and just pull you out a dark wedge. I don't put too many and I want them also to be different widths and lengths or sizes. Then once you do that, you have to pull back out the petals on top. Don't want that black green in my brush, so I'm going to clean it out. Now, there is a little bit, a lot of times on these daisies, a little bit of a green shadow that runs right underneath where that center of that daisy meets the petals. So I'm going to do a little chartreuse in the brush. You could do this also on another fire. And I'm going to come right up next to those little spaces and also the areas that I knocked out with the brush and with the wipeout tool. Sometimes it's hard to paint and make sure you can see it in the camera and talk. So you have to be now, up in here, I don't see a lot of that green because what's happening is it you can see it more as a sh shadow underneath these centers. So then I'm going to come back now and lift out a light, a place or two. I don't want all of these alike alike. You know, the simple secret to all good art is no two things alike alike. 
no twins, no triplets, none of those tuplets. Make it interesting. Now then once I've done that, I've got to come back with the wipeout tool and knock it up again. I mean, knock it out again, sorry. So that, that puts everything back under. The last stroke you take puts whatever you did last on top. So there you go. And I'm gonna show you how to do a little bud. And I'm going to start with the stem and this is just antique green. And that's a little dark, but I'm gonna lighten it up, right? Okay, then I wiggle with the brush side. I've got the brush at a, at a horizontal, right? And I'm gonna flip it up vertically. And then round it up. Okay, now I'm going to lift out some light. I like to use big brushes. It helps me to not, they help to smooth out the paint instead of making a lot of little tiny strokes. Now, if you want color in those buds, I'm going to take some soft rose, which is darker than soft pink and a little soft pink. A lot of times on white flowers, if you'll notice on, uh, they have pink, their buds are pink. It's interesting. Not a real dark pink, but they're pink. And just put a little bit of color in them. If you want to make it look like it's starting to open up, which I didn't do on this other piece, but you could come in and just do a little wedge and a wedge and you get the idea. Or maybe some petals starting to open up. Now then I wanna put some stems down here where I started these leaves. And I'm gonna let that paint rest before I wipe out that stem. And I angle it into, at a curved angle, not straight up and down. That's really important by the way. And there's another, there is another bud here. And there's gonna be another bud here. Cause I want the buds in three spots, not just one. And again, it's a triangle of motion. Another thing is paint with paint, not tinted oil. In other words, get some paint on there. Scare yourself. I, I, I like it when people say, my paint all fired out. I don't know what happened. Well, you didn't have paint on there enough color on there. Okay, so up here I'm gonna wipe out. I'm gonna show you what to do on the outside edge of a leaf that doesn't have background. If you've got background all in, in the back behind it, it's a little harder to do what I'm gonna show you right now because I'm gonna use the wipeout tool out here to create a more interesting shape. Do you see how much quicker that is when you've got, so, but you want it to have interesting outside shape. And see, I curved that leaf a little bit. They look better curved than straight on.
Now, this is an important step and it's a scary step. I use a Viva paper towel and I use the smooth side of the paper towel. And I use what I call tongue oil. So that means a little bit of saliva, spit, whatever you want to call it on the paper towel. And I come with, with this and I just licked on it. So I'm going to come in now and wipe out a really, really strong blast of light. A, a blast of light without a lot of detail. Why would I do that? Because it gives the flower a little bit more transparency and not so um, set. It gives you also what I call an opportunity to come in and change it up a little bit on another fire. But that blast of light is what the old masters used a lot in their paintings. And in a blast of light, there's no detail. All of your detail is in your midtones. All of your details in your midtones. That's why in a lot of uh, art, not just ours, in all, a lot of art, a painting sometimes looks unfinished because it's all midtone or it tells too much, it's all too detailed. It looks better with a little bit of mystery than you let the viewer participate in the painting and have a good time making their own judgments or what they like in that. Now I wanna show you a shadow shape really quickly. We've got, am I right about 10 more minutes? So. Yes, ma'am, uh, you're doing great on time. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to come in with some black green and some blue green. And I'm just gonna pull down here a shape. And if you just pull it into a shape that says, I am a daisy leaf. And what it is in the shadows, there's no detail. So they're pretty much flat shapes, but they will have in a the shadow, they will have transition of light. So in other words, it will have some light in it. Go out to the sidewalk on a sunny day and look at some of the cast shadows that you see. Also, sometimes what we call shadow shapes or shadows are actually leaves in shadow, not leaves necessarily that are in focus. They're in the background. And remember this, photographs lie. They make, a lot of times they make dark, darker than they really are and lights lighter than they really are. All right, so now I want a little negative space in here. You have two options. One thing I don't usually do is do it with the wipeout tool. I'll do it with my cloth. But if you like to use a wipeout tool, go for it, but don't let me know you used it. In other words, if you sometimes with the wipeout tool, you get to do the same shape, the same shape, the same shape. Also with the wipeout tool, you'll get a buildup. And that with if you learn to use Viva paper towel or uh, Walmart silk, as I like to call this, Viva paper towel is my Walmart silk, or you can use uh, a silk, the real thing like we used to do in the old days. But I got tired of washing silk and this is much easier. All right, so now then over here, just for a refresher, come in and use your wipeout tool. This is where you can have it and just twist it. Now you could use the flexible one that Jane Marks products has, or you can use whoever's has a flexible one. That's just who I happen to think of. Or you can use uh, this, this wedge. And a lot of us have this one that is a little stiffer. This is the other one I'm talking about. I've had this one for years. I think there's a lot of artists that also sell these uh, tools. And this one will give you a bigger wipeout, a little softer one. So whatever you like, it's up to you. Are there any, now then, um, Suzanne, I'm ready. If anybody wants to ask questions, uh, I would, I'm not going to finish this one out because of time constraints, but are there any questions? 
Okay, thank you so much, Cheryl. In closing, just a reminder, uh, this demo was recorded. It will be uploaded to our new YouTube channel, which is IPAT Museum Channel. To locate this video, you will search for Cheryl Meg's Daisy's First Fire, and remember it will be available tomorrow for viewing. I'm gonna also put it in the chat. We wanna thank you for joining us today. We wanna thank our feature artist, Cheryl Meggs. What beautiful work. And until next time, happy painting. I'm going to unmute everyone and let you ask questions directly to Cheryl. I also would like to maybe flash me and show me what y'all have been painting. That'd be kind of fun. Wow, way to go, Linda, way to go. Thank you. Y'all are doing good. Come on, Deb, let's see yours. I've lost people, where'd you go? Let me see, participants, okay. Go, Anna. Where's yours, Linda? Nice. Y'all are doing good. Cheryl. I showed mine. I showed mine, Deb. You show yours. Oh, I missed it. Deb and I are friends. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Here it is. This How do we see fun? All right, does anybody have any questions? We appreciate you sharing and asking questions. How do you see all the participants? I see like 16. So how do you switch and see the rest of the people? You can go to the right-hand side or the left-hand side mid-screen and scroll to the next page. Um, you can also go up to view in the right-hand corner and you can see gallery view, which shows everyone or you can do speaker view, um, and that shows our that shows whoever's talking at that time. Okay, I will figure that out. But it was great demo, Cheryl. You did great. I mean, even with the loss of um, uh, coverage, I think you covered everything. It was great. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Cheryl. This was really good. I'm amazed at how many people are on this thing now. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. All right, be sure to to look for the registration for our March 5th demo. We get to do it again. Uh, our featured art artist will be Cynthia Pinnell. You'll register the same way you did for this session. And we really look forward to, to that demonstration. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye Linda. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye Thank you. Bye Linda. Oh, I see. Okay.